This clear, rocky stream is home to one of the most ancient animals in North America. A strange, otherworldly creature has lived here, unchanged for tens of millions of years. But its future on our planet is now less certain than ever. Someone once said that this animal looked like something from hell that was bent on going back. But despite its intimidating name, hellbenders pose no threat to humans. They live underwater, yet adults have no gills. Instead, their skin is loose and wrinkly, providing an increased surface area to uptake oxygen directly from the water. These giant salamanders can only survive in clean, well-oxygenated water and they thrive in pristine mountain streams. It's autumn on the river now, and as most life is preparing to go dormant, new life is beginning beneath the surface. For a hellbender, it is breeding season. Male hellbenders seek out large rocks with cavities underneath, called dens. They repel all intruders from their rock and territory, except for one, a female hellbender. Once she lays her eggs, the male chases her away and stays with them, oxygenating them with his tail and body, and guarding them well after they hatch into small, gilled larvae. Once, hellbenders could be seen in many rivers across the eastern and midwestern U.S., but in the past century, they have declined dramatically. Up until very recently, hellbenders were even found in larger rivers like the Ohio, the Wabash, and the Kentucky. These rivers are not clean or well oxygenated, but they once were. The dredging and system of locks and dams put in place during the 1900s has transformed large portions of these once pristine rivers into sluggish, coffee-colored flowing reservoirs. And the hellbenders could not survive this change. The loss of these extensive and connected habitats has relegated hellbender populations mostly to smaller, scattered streams across the U.S. But even here, their existence is threatened by agricultural runoff and sedimentation. Today, most populations exist on protected land that preserves the forest habitat around the stream and the water quality within. The Appalachian Mountains in particular remain a stronghold for the species, but here in the Midwest, conservation biologists are fighting hard to save the few hellbender populations that have managed to survive. Once found in most streams south of the glaciated plains, hellbenders have disappeared entirely from Illinois and are hanging on in Indiana in only a single stream, the Blue River. With the outlook for their survival here looking increasingly grim, researchers from Purdue University stepped in to help. Help the Hellbender is a, a program created by Purdue professor Dr. Rod Williams to serve as a group to con help conserve Hellbenders and uh, promote outreach and public awareness for Hellbenders and, and how people can help. The most direct way the program helps Hellbenders is by headstarting juveniles for release into their historic habitats in an attempt to bolster natural populations enough for them to become self-sustaining. But the best reintroduction project will not succeed if the habitat is poor. So first, researchers needed to look at the health of the Blue River ecosystem. The main changes that have happened in the Blue River is that the conservation practices of surrounding landowners have really improved. So the local soil and water conservation districts have worked with a lot of the farmers to implement uh, conservation practices like riparian buffers and grass waterways, cover crops and no-till no farming. And that's had an effect in the river and there's, there's less sediment, uh, fewer chemicals entering the river. And so over the last several decades, the, the, the general water quality of the river has improved. Unfortunately, hellbenders have declined so much in Indiana that locating nests to collect eggs from is extremely difficult. Luckily, Partnerships with Ohio and Kentucky allow researchers to collect eggs from some of the remaining streams with healthy populations. We raise hellbenders here at the Aquaculture Research Lab in, with intent to 
release them back into the Blue River. Um, our populations here in Indiana have been low for quite some time. So what we decided to do was to bring them here to captivity and raise them during their most vulnerable life stages, which is from eggs to larval and hopes to increase their survival once they get released. Some will be returned to their stream of origin and some will be released into the Blue River to recover the Indiana population. The Help the Hellbender program has also enlisted the help of several zoos in Indiana in raising hellbenders for release and in promoting hellbender and water quality conservation. But releasing hellbenders is more than just putting them in the river. A wire cage is filled with limestone riprap and then covered with a larger mesh cage with zippers for access. Hellbenders are released into the cage where they then swim down and hide amongst the rocks. Inside this cage, there are 31 hellbenders. They'll be here for about three days as they get used to being in the river. After that, we'll take the top cage off and the hellbenders will be free to disperse throughout the river at their leisure. In conservation biology, this is what is known as a soft release. It lets the animal gradually adjust to life in the wild. This is in contrast to a hard release, which would simply be letting the animal go free in the river instantly. Purdue has released nearly 500 hellbenders back into the Blue River over the past five years, and surveys are ongoing to monitor for natural reproduction and recruitment. Hellbenders are like so many other rare and declining creatures, struggling to survive in a world we humans increasingly control and alter to our liking. But they are also a reminder that beautiful, wild spaces still exist, as do opportunities to protect our wild neighbors that call these spaces home. <laughs>